Hello everyone, this is Adam Anderson, Product Trainer at Maple Systems. Welcome back to our EBPro training series. In the last video, we provided an overview of the benefits of CMT Viewer for controlling and monitoring the Smart CMT series HMIs, compared with VNC, which we use to monitor and control our basic and advanced HMIs remotely. In this video, we'll discuss data sampling. This is collecting time series data from a PLC controller, from the HMI, or from a remote HMI. You can log and save this data on the HMI or on attached media, USB or SD card, and then you can generate visualizations, trends, and data tables, like a history data display, using this sample data. We'll show you each of these in subsequent videos. In this video, we'll focus first on how do we set up this data sampling? There are two main methods of collecting this time series data from your PLC. One is trigger-based sampling, where you grab a snapshot of any number of values or registers and log that to the HMI. The other is time-based data sampling, where every X number of seconds you read and log a set of values, what we would call your data records. This demonstration uses local registers on the HMI. Here we're using local word 50 and local word 51 and we're just going to be logging two 16-bit unsigned values. To begin, now that we know which registers we want to look at, we'll go to the Data History tab and select Data Sampling, then we'll click New. Here we see we have time-based and trigger-based as options. Time-based, we can choose a number of seconds as an interval at which to sample from the addresses defined under the Read Address section and governed by the range of records that we set up under the data records section here. Here you can see the device that's set is Modbus TCP IP Master. That was a device we set up to communicate with in a previous video. As I mentioned, we'll use the local HMI in this video, and we just need to define a starting register to read from. That will be local word 50 for us. We'll read at a faster sampling interval, sampling time of 0.1 seconds. What exactly we're reading, again, is defined by the data records that we put here. So we click on Data Format, and we need to add at least one record or format. And we can set a 16-bit unsigned. Let's we'll call this Channel 1. And since we're reading two registers, we'll create another Channel 2 here. We can give this a name. and make sure it's set to the local HMI. We can save this to HMI memory and we see the options to save to USB disk here, to set file naming and file handling options here, and a preservation limit for a number of days here. Once we've done this, we will be saving these two words or two registers worth of data to the HMI memory every 0.1 seconds with this setup. We're gonna click OK and just look at the kind of data that we're seeing displayed on these numeric display objects and how we got that set up. So let's run an offline simulation. And we'll go to our new window, data sampling. We see these values moving up on their own and this simulated data is set up via two different methods. We'll just show you quickly how you can do that. The first is using a set word object and we've shown you this in previous videos. We can use periodic bounce between a low and a high limit using an increment value and a time interval. So that's what's governing the values at local word 51. So we're logging that. And for local word 50, we're using a macro to write these values into local word 50. And it's up to you if you want to use a macro or a set word object to generate data like this just for testing purposes. This macro you could review more in detail using the sample project, which is free on our website. So we have these two methods in conjunction here, just to show you that there's different ways we can generate that data. These values are being logged on the HMI in local HMI memory. So again, all we had to do was define which registers we want to keep track of, select the read address and time-based or trigger-based mode, set the data formats, create these two data formats or data records here, and then choose how or where we want to save this data. We have a more advanced video that covers more of the details, including the hold address, the clear function, 
and the different means of backing up data. And we'll include a link to that at the end of this playlist. Just look for the Mastering EB Pro video on trending and data sampling. This is all we need to do is set up our data sampling object. In the next video, we'll look at how we can use the data that is being sampled now in a trend display. Be sure to check that out in the next video.